Hello, welcome to the Redux edition of Strange Patterns. I'll be revisiting some stuff that I discussed in the Strange Patterns episode and um, sharing some new finds. And I've got some important comments in this video. Uh, I would say don't skip any of it, but obviously I can't tell you what to do. So first up, the spirals in South Africa, uh, these guys, yeah, so uh, just a couple updates on these, uh, real quick, just a couple views here, so you get a good feel for it, see some tire tracks there, blah blah, and that's that. Okay, so I found some images on the ground of the site and as you can see it's basically just the dry ground and then it's been broken up by some type of trench or uh, ditch and there you go and here's another view of it see the trench here pretty clearly so it, it has been created by pretty simple methods modern methods and it is new. However, uh, when you look at these pictures, I'm not picturing much cattle grazing going on or, uh, you know, like the article was saying, these ditches are designed to trap seeds as they blow across so that vegetation will start to grow and then cattle and animals will have a place to graze. But I'm not seeing these ditch. I mean, there are some bushes growing in, so that appears to be working somewhat but um, I'm just not seeing uh, any substantial grazing happening here um, I could be wrong but anyways I'm leaning I'm kind of leaning towards the modern leg of a continuous protocol on this one um, continuous generation of strange patterns just putting a bunch of gibberish on the earth's surface uh, because several reasons. Let's take a look at this guy's video. He was covering the spirals and then he also put up some, or I guess she, some good images of uh, other spirals. So I want to discuss the spiral in general as a phenomenon, as a component of this larger program to generate odd stuff both on the surface of the earth and in architecture and all kinds of stuff so I'm just gonna kind of let this play and stop and show you some of the similarities like the the winding spirals and obviously a spiral is a fundamental pattern in nature although our version of nature may be a contrived one but in reality or existence or creation or just math even in physics a spiral is a pretty fundamental pattern uh, however, some of these resemblances are kind of uncanny. Here we're seeing it on various sites uh, around the world, just as part of a symbol soup operation. Got double spirals, triple spirals, uh, just kind of for shits and giggles almost, like the, the winding meandering spirals. And I mean, I scribble sometimes. But it's like they went to these great lengths to work stone at a pretty high level and on a pretty large scale. But then they made these goofy patterns with it. And a, a spiral is part of that pattern. And this is something, the triple spiral, I uh, see that quite a bit. Pottery, I haven't really addressed much, but that's an interesting component as well. Here's the, um, the Nazca lines. There's a spiral in the Nazca lines. A uh, pretty big one, and Nazca lines obviously a big mystery, possibly a deliberate mystery, and the spiral is perhaps a um, just one of hundreds or thousands of symbols, which is used to uh, I don't know draw your attention in or as a an attention magnet type of thing, or or for any any number of purposes that are flying over my head 
that I'm not quite seeing. And it looks like there's one underneath as well that I just noticed. So that's interesting too. So yeah, the uh, the overwriting aspect, the over overwriting the um, previous patterns. I think this may be an indication that the whole surface makeover thing is uh, ongoing and continuous and possibly with like, you know, big discontinuous lapses in activity or increases in activity, but in general, just an ongoing process. So I think what we're seeing with these, uh, these spirals may be like just another rollout of odd patterns. Um, yes, done by tractors and stuff, but I think the way this program works is by minimum effective dose maybe, or by like least confirmable as otherworldly. So they use conventional methods to carry out their program, perhaps. Um, just the thought. And could they create these in five seconds overnight, like, like the crop circles are created? Probably, although crop circles may be done with conventional methods as well. Um, and is it also possible that these spirals are part of the, the farmer's legitimate agenda and a part of the tooler's agenda? Or the, the mo effers, the, the fuckers, the, the tomfooleriers? the mischief makers. It could be a part of both a down-to-earth human agenda and the goofy mischievous agenda as well. Like, again, very speculative, but if there was something like anchored into our subconscious, which like gave us ideas, like I don't know where I, my ideas come from, like my best ideas, I don't, I feel like they don't come from me. Uh, have you ever felt that way? You know what I mean? And, uh, but anyways, let's continue with uh, this looking at these spirals. So overwriting and multiple um, ages of Nazca lines, perhaps just kind of going along and making patterns every couple of years or whatever throughout the centuries. And even now there may be new Nazca lines popping up. There's always a new article like, oh, new Nazca lines found at blah, blah, blah new, uh, in Peru. Um, and, uh, those could be, well, there could be, they could have been there a long time, but there could also be like new ones and even new ones that are made to look old. Uh, I think we're dealing with something which is so subtle that like we really can't hope to get ahead of it uh, in some sense. But seeing the, the spirals here, and this is kind of like spiral soup on a big boulder uh, mixed with, uh, or at the same side as uh, more primitive patterns or uh, building styles. Um, so this is like spiral soup with squares and kind of psychedelic almost. Uh, random spirals everywhere. And the maze aspect is this like maze symbol is kind of a, a variation on it, I guess you would say. And then these like just circles. Uh, more of it here. Many sites. These are just miscellaneous sites. And, uh, okay, I think that's it for this guy's presentation. So, yeah, here's the Nazca line spiral. Just a couple different looks at it. And here we see the big, the big inexplicable um, wide lines, uh, which people speculate are airstrips or whatever. And I'm saying they're strategically made to look like they could be multiple things. And then we have the spiral with this going in the middle, like, like oh, we're, we're gonna spend another 10 minutes trying to figure out what this is, and then why it's, you know, why some are more, you know, we've got some possible bumps and dots here, parallel lines and all, like, uh, just the shit show overwriting the shit show continually. And see, like patterns over patterns. Puzzle of the Nazca holes is solved. Is it? But you get the idea. The uh, 
making new patterns and overriding their old patterns, possibly um, just just to deepen the mystery. And obviously the Nazca lines are, see this is one that looks more crisp. Wouldn't surprise me if this was done like in the 1800s or something. Although uh, it's possible that there's uh, the image has been edited to make it more clear. It's possible. But yeah, I don't think you can make the case that this isn't gibberish <laughs> I mean, look at this guy and uh, anyways uh, just the spiral in conjunction with this uh, as a case study in um, one of many thousands of symbols uh, which blend together mind you uh, one of many thousands of symbols which are used to carry out this confusion or discombobulation, or bewilderment, or um, ensnarement, generally, this program that I talk about. Um, okay, and brief remark, so the symbols blending together, like, I would imagine like a sophisticated computer program, hi, um, that has many inputs, like many symbols as inputs, or many, like, spirals, uh, staircases, lines, um, squiggles, like all kinds of stuff as its input, and then it can continuously interpolate between these symbols to create basically anything. Like these symbols and animals and stuff, like that's like the alphabet of a somewhat sophisticated um, goobery computer program, and then it can just go to town making infinite variations on the patterns it has to work with, with uh, infinite many processing algorithms, basically. Okay, let's move on to... I want to show you some of my own examples, or just some images I downloaded uh, of more spirals. And this section is kind of drawing out already, but just bear with me. So I've got about a hundred images here of miscellaneous sites around the world of miscellaneous cultures, miscellaneous ages, or mix, and here um, I'm just going to quickly scroll through them. Here we see kind of symbol soup. We might wonder why there's an, a knob here. Again, knob or nub being um, another one of the letters in the alphabet of this symbol soup or feature, feature soup. Uh, here we have animals. And I'm suspecting a lot of petroglyphs are plants, whether modern or ancient. And when I say plants, I mean like contrived and manufactured and just kind of goofishly put there. This is a, a castle in uh, Denure Castle in Scotland. And it has these stacked rocks, this maze. This may be modern. I didn't do the research into this particular aspect of it. Um, but again, the maze... You know what? I'm gonna go pull up uh, one of these in uh, San Francisco. So, well, let me finish this thought first. Uh, so the maze and the spiral, again, could just be modern or ongoing aspects of this symbol soup. And I'll show you a modern spiral in San Francisco. So this is San Francisco Bay, and uh, it's near the Sutro Baths, which uh, is an interesting site I've touched on. Uh, and an interesting hole right through the cliff side, um, a cave thing. And just down the way we have this maze, which is um, Eagle Point Labyrinth. So this is modern, however, um, uh, just based on what I remember from when I looked into this, you know, I was all excited when I found it and then I, I had to dismiss it again because um, because I found out it was modern, but now I'm kind of bringing it back into study because uh, this ongoing aspect or possibility is um, uh, I don't know just tugging at me lately and uh, this Eagle Point Labyrinth is like, uh, yeah, here you see it. It's just stacked rocks in this labyrinth thing. 
So I think it's like a string of clues or something like that, or any number of like, okay, it could be a false string of clues, like just like dead ends leading to dead ends as, as a, a trap or a weird ensnarement or a science experiment or something, or it could be like legitimate clues. I don't know. I think it's kind of a little of both. Like it's like, Hey, look at this featuring of this pattern and pay attention to where it appears and then try and try and connect the dots. So I think this may be, this may be like a wake up call, like trying to get us to connect the dots. And again, the artist who made this may not even know it. So it's very possible that in weird subtle ways that like we're all part of this and we don't even know it. Like reality is strange, uh, that whole discussion, etc. But there's this, and then we just saw, of course, this thing, which is very similar, almost identical, really, uh, at this castle in Scotland, Denure Castle, I think it's called. Yeah, so there's that to consider. Um, not quite sure what's going on. Uh, the Peru Nazca line spiral with all the other lines uh, kind of overtaking one another. Um, and here again with the maze thing, uh, 18th century, uh, Ireland, England, uh, India. So we have quite a bit of this and cultural diffusion is real, obviously, like cultures are going to share symbols and art and, uh, styles. And I mean, you know, but so, so this could just be like an organic spread of symbols and, and culture and artistic styles, but I don't know. I'm thinking lately that it's, it's, this is, this is all cumulatively asking you what it's doing. Like, it's like teasing you, like asking you, Hey, why am I, why am I here? Why am I putting, or why am I a spiral here? Why, uh, why are there spirals everywhere? What does it mean? Or does it mean anything? And, um, uh, if you've seen the show Westworld, uh, the maze is a fundamental component. And I think, uh, if you're familiar with the, the concept of a truth drop, um, the idea, uh, like truth in movies, uh, lies in the media or something like that. Um, that's the old adage. Uh, but I do think movies and TV have a lot of hints for whatever reason. I don't quite know why that is, but anyways, there's this maze aspect here. And, um, I think this is kind of a hint again, uh, something to, uh, alert us to not just the maze aspect of it, but the, um, uh, well, not just the maze as a symbol, but the maze as a, a theme in our um, experience here on Earth. So the maze is one, one symbol that's used in the symbol soup, but also navigating the symbol soup is like a maze you can get trapped in. This ma the maze wasn't meant for you, something like that. So like, don't, don't even go into the maze maybe, like, something like that. Uh, again, appearing everywhere. Um, I, don't, oh, I guess I see a little spiral here. Um, and just the, the general gibberish that we're meant to wonder, what is it? What is it? See, like this could be a flower. It could be a, a compass. It could be any number of things. Um, uh, or just caveman drawing. I don't know. Like we see the variations, we see the, the spiral here, double spiral, and then just the circles with concentric rings. We see the dots and divots. Dots and divots is a, or um, I guess scoop marks or circular uh, little shallow cavities is a, another big thing I'll be touching on in the future. Here we have Plumbus Man. He's got spiral arms and a um, kind of a s spiral esque light bulb head and spiral nipples. And it's, it's just, just goof, goof salad. So, uh, see here, here's another example of the, the indentations, the round, um, pock marks or divots or whatever you'd call these things. 
um, little bowls almost, and I'm saying these aren't functional, and this is basically another letter letter in the alphabet of the symbol soup um, aspect of this whole protocol. This, I'm not sure why I included that, but could could be a mystery or could be a natural thing even. This, I think I showed you other already, it's just a, another angle, um, just a good look at the various, and this is a, a, a megalithic like dolmen site, one of those sites that's like, um, goes underground a little bit, uh, it's like in a mound, and uh, it's it's got all these um, wavy patterns on it, so again, I, uh, well, maybe I don't even need to comment on it. The flowers, the, the lines, I mean, I, I like, this is stuff we would, we might have done when we were just exploring our, our minds. So it is, it is consistent with the idea of like a, a caveman type character, um, exploring his creative side as he evolves, um, which is the conventional narrative. Uh, but it's also consistent with this uh, protocol with a capital P that I'm talking about, symbol soup, alphabet of symbols, uh, feature, feature salad. Um, and I, I, should, I should mention that just because it's consistent with, just because my, the theory I'm talking about fits the data doesn't mean it's the right explanation for the data. Um, and that also goes the other way as well. The caveman explanation uh, does fit this data. Like it does look like primitive people exploring their creative side um, in kind of primitive and goofy ways. Um, but just because that makes sense doesn't mean it's the right explanation. And just because the explanation I'm presenting here makes sense doesn't necessarily necessarily mean it's the right explanation either. Um, I'm just kind of spitballing and uh, brainstorming and uh, presenting alternative ways of looking at things. The triple spiral, yeah, uh, that's another common thing. I mean, again, it's just kind of a fundamental pattern in math, but it shows up in, in modern stuff as well. I'll show you in a minute. Um, again, the concentric rings as a variation, this almost looking like a half maze like the line here, it's kind of like, this is like halfway between a, a set of concentric circles and that maze type of thing we were looking at. Like see here's got kind of that nub in the middle of the maze with the line here, but here it's looking more like just concentral, concentric circles with the line, maybe another line here. Um, so again, like uh, an interpolation between these, these symbols and, um, and of course it could just be someone noodling and expressing them themselves, but uh, this, this could be totally innocent, I mean, or it could be an aspect of what I'm talking about. This I would say is more, I'm leaning more towards this as a, a plumbus, like a plant, like, like the idea of like when police falsely plant evidence on a crime scene or something like that, that's what I mean by plant. Um, so like this guy with the symbol cross and the poorly drawn head, uh, I'm saying this, this may not just be a, a primitive tribute to the, the dead person or whatever this is supposed to be, but it, it might just be a, a goof, goof thing. Uh, I think a duplicate image here. Um, old timers studying these symbols. And um, see again, concentric rings with just the, th th see this wouldn't qualify as a maze, I think. This is just a variation on it, like a stylization of that type of thing. And here we have kind of similar stylizations. It's just, it's just like, like when Google Deep Dream just um, gibberishizes uh, a concept uh, to invent a word when it um, takes in an image and spits out a dreamy version of it, 
so like, okay, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm repeating myself, sorry, but like, uh, like the com a computer has uh, concentric rings as a letter in its alphabet. It has, um, well, and it's also going to have things that resemble concentric rings, so that would be one way to process it. Like you could, it could go take this and then make it look like almost like the planets and then make that look almost like the sun and then just do this like feature sex and create all these variations in uh, infinite varieties. Um, okay, again with the pock marks, uh, which I'm saying aren't necessarily functional, like we could certainly envision these being like mortar and pestle type um, grinding sites for uh, for grain or nuts or something. Um, I think that's likely and it does kind of fit the data. Uh, here we're seeing like a multiple concentric rings so that's slightly odd but uh, yeah this could also just be just like a spiral. Again here the, the circles, the mul multiple circles all over the place and it's like begging you to um, ask why it's there and we're supposed to figure it out. And again, spirals here, uh, meh, I mean, it's a trunk, so. But just a, a big show, a big, uh, big mystery, I think. Here again, looking actually kind of like the uh, the South Africa spirals I, I showed in the Strange Patterns video or I've been talking about, um, like the wavy lines aspect of it, like the spirals, and then the wavy meandering doodles. So this is like a, a doodle, and um, it, it would appear that someone may still be doodling in a, a subtle way that's meant to mess with us. Remember, that the name of that valley where these symbols appear in South Africa is Fernoikpan, and that means to deceive, or to trick, or to mislead. Um, which I get, which yes, could per, could refer to the depth perception aspect, like the the flatness of the place mis, makes you uh, uh, kind of it's misleading, uh, and you can't really get your bearings. Uh, your depth perception is off. Yeah, it could could refer to that and it may even refer to both is what I'm also considering. So it's like Again, it's I can't I can't wrap my head around it. You're not you're not smart enough. I'm not smart enough. Like that's the idea it, behind it. It's like It's uh, it's beyond our our reach almost um Entrance to Newgrange, when the mountain had become overgrown. Again, with this, I haven't talked too much about dolmens yet. I will in a more extended Plumbus series. But, uh, yeah, the, the spirals. Spirals. Um, and this nice little ring with uh, a nicely presented... Uh, this looks like a, a dinner plate at a fancy restaurant when they have the big, um, the, the large plate, and then the, the small little meal in the middle um, for with like a nice presentation or whatever. But it's like, it, it's like this silver platter of bullshit. <laughs> and I, I mean, I can't help but laugh when I see this. Like, um, I mean, in one sense it's no laughing matter because it, it will continually it's like a, a death spiral that will continually eat your soul or something like that, maybe. I mean, that's on the table as possible. I don't know if that's the case, but... Um, and I don't think there's necessarily a lot of wisdom in uh, pretending that you have no control. Uh, we do have some control, so I guess we just got to exercise it as much as possible. But anyways... Um, this is this is both not a laughing matter and a laughing matter, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Cause it's like, it's like, ooh, this special location, all dolled up and fenced off so that the public doesn't ruin it. When, in reality, it's just like, like, 
like a scribble by a, a deception program. Okay, more scribbles and beginning to get overkill here. Uh, so I'll try and go a little quicker through it. Again with the divots and pock marks. And all around the world you see very similar similar stuff. And these things were, prob were probably meant to wonder why that is. What are these? What do they represent? Um, are these fingerprints? Are they... Oh, what is it? And that's kind of the point, or at least that's partially the point. Um, and... Yep. Uh, let's quickly look at these. Anything interesting? This like pr primitive elephant thing. This reminds me of that T-Rex in the Nazca lines. It's like a very primitive attempt to make a T-Rex. This, yeah, I could see how someone could spend five years trying to figure out what this is. Um, yeah, whatever. And this, the spirals kind of linking together, kind of like we see in South Africa. With the animals, spirals and animals, symbols and animals, just as a, a placeholder for nothing. Okay. Um, yeah, again, these um, mounds or hill forts, pretty large scale thing. Somewhere in the UK, this is, uh, I'm not quite sure where the site is, but it's uh, apparently an ancient village and these were like walls and these these divots these um, holes or spots these were like the footprints of houses but uh, that's that's the conventional story but I'm saying this might just be like a you know just a large-scale version of the the goofy spiral art you know like this like this type of thing um, but just mapped that principle, this principle mapped to the surface of the earth. So it's, this is basically the same thing as that stone carving, but just bigger, maybe. <sighs> More of the same. Uh, always with the variations and the cultural idiosyncrasies. And ooh, this one looks like a hamburger, or like has aspects of that maze type of thing. What is this? And like this, like this hamburger looking thing, or whatever, uh, boomerang, whatever you want to call it. And oh, okay, I just noticed this. So I'm going to take you back to Isla, Isla de Alagranza in Spain. So first off, we have the spiral, we have like concentric things. We have this um, quasi-maze, which is like an interpolation between this maze and this thing, or like just concentric circles. So this is like another goofy variation on the maze thing. And this is like a circle with a line in the middle. So now I feel like I got to take you to uh, that island we looked at last time. So let's check it out. So this island... Isla de Alagranza, it's got the kind of meandering patterns, which is very similar to all the, the carved artwork we're looking at. Uh, and then, so that that's to consider, uh, or to keep in mind, these meandering ridges, which don't necessarily seem to uh, paint a coherent story and then what I wanted to show you was this guy so look at this like this circle with the line in the middle just as as one little variation or one little output of this very rich symbol soup and we see should I suppose it should be considered alongside this um, but just compare this to this? I don't know, maybe I'm grasping at straws, maybe it's the stretch, but it's the circle with the line in the middle, and I would say not intended to mean anything, it's just there. It's like a, a placeholder almost, and then these little other markings as well. But 
All right, uh, let's move along. One more comment I want to interject here with on this image. Okay, so it's almost like this image or this rock, this site, is like a Rosetta stone. So what I mean by that is you have the spiral in the middle. Here we have um, this circle with the line in the middle. And then here's like a feature average between circles and this thing. So it's like this averaged with this equals this in some um, semantic or symbolic sense. Uh, like this is kind of a feature average of these two, uh, possibly. Like just on this one stone alone, it's trying to send you a message, uh, perhaps. And then also I wanted to say that uh, that, con that concept in general of the Rosetta Stone, it's as if all of these sites and um, the multiple phenomena or um, anomalies you see at each site, uh, it's as if it's all one big uh, self-referential Rosetta Stone. So like each, each site will have multiple anomalies like paired together uh, or side by side um, or just appearing on the same rock or at the same site and then it's up to us to say well why are those two things together like for instance the the vehicle tracks in stone and then a, maybe a spiral next to it or something so it's like the the pairing um, or the the co-appearance of these various um, I don't know, letters of the alphabet, or um, anomalies, or like this square hole that we'll see um, in some sites. Uh, it's like it's all linking to itself, or um, referencing itself with like uh, an integrated network of uh, callbacks and um, uh, like each site is a commercial for the other sites and it's like self-referential kind of um, uh, and the point of that like why why someone would do that uh, again any number of reasons um, uh, I, I could probably explain that better, but uh, just throwing the idea out there um, and maybe uh, maybe there's some truth to it. Uh, the divots and pop, pockmarks, the flower looking things, which could also be suns or whatever, uh, pockmarks and spirals, Let's see a, a spiral of holes and spirals of holes running into each other. Um, <clears throat> the hole in the middle, what does that represent? Maybe nothing. Here's uh, in my hometown, San Clemente, uh, the logo for this housing development is this triple spiral, and that's possible, well, several possibilities. One, that could be me, uh, just to a hammer, everything is a nail. So, like, to a conspiracy theorist, everything is a conspiracy, right? Something like that. Or, like, maybe I'm seeing connections where there are none. And certainly, like, I've drawn spirals for no reason, and so have you, like, just doodling and stuff. And I, I've, there are symbols I just think are cool, uh, or shapes and whatnot, whatever. And people are artists, obviously. So this could just be someone at their desk saying, okay, let's make this the logo and it has nothing to do with this protocol I'm talking about. But I've also noticed like more blatant symbolism in architecture and uh, um, these high-end uh, housing companies in general. Like on Zillow, you can see the artwork in a lot of these houses, Zillow, Zillow.com, if you're not familiar. It's like rentals and, and buying houses and stuff, and you can look, look uh, take a tour of the houses, digital tour, and you see a lot of the one-eye symbolism in the artwork in these places 
and a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of like Illuminati type stuff almost, or what would be considered that. So I think, uh, I can't quite make sense of what I'm seeing definitively, but there's some, uh, some ongoing aspect, um, it seems to me. Okay, maybe not, but maybe. Um, the pattern's on the side here with the very, very goofy face. Um, <laughs> the, again, the, the concentric circles with the line, like very similar to that maze pattern or a spiral. Just yet another. Um, and these miscellaneous tool marks, which are probably kind of bullshitty. Uh, okay. This, again, we've got checkerboard. We've got the circles with the divots for no apparent reason. Uh, and uh, spirals, yeah. Again, overkill. Let's see. I, I had 97 images. So let me see how many more I have. Oh, we're about halfway through. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, saw this already. This, another angle of the same place. Uh, yeah, checkerboards and spirals. Um, spirals, yeah. Spirals. Square spiral. Ooh, now we're talking... Again, the concentric rings with the similar patterns of pock marks that we've seen already. And these are multiple sites around the world, like disparate or like hundreds or thousands of miles apart. So we're talking about a global phenomenon um, to the degree that the, the word global is valid. I mean, I don't even know what Earth, Earth is, but... Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a flat earther, I certainly, but I'm, I'm not an, not an anything earther because I just don't know what the fuck's going on, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, remains to be seen as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, you see this all over, so you, it's reasonable to at least ask if they're done by the same hand or artistic school, you know, multiple different people from the same artistic school or philosophical school or same agenda. This zigzag, see a lot of zigzags as well. Spirals, concentric circles. And okay, are they depicting uh, catastrophes that they saw in the sky? I don't see like, or like, you know, the Thunderbolts project, like uh, that's a YouTube channel, the Thunderbolts project. And they talk about like the, the electrical phenomenon that may have been seen in the sky, and I don't really buy that. I was into that for a while, but now I don't really buy that explanation. Um, not that there wasn't inter interesting stuff in the sky in the past that may have looked like this, but uh, given the all the other stuff that's nearby, I don't think that's they're just depicting that weirdness. And like, this isn't a depiction of a cosmic catastrophe or an electrical just discharge between Mars and Jupiter or whatever. This is like, um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's a plumbus. This we saw already. This pretty much went over already. Um, sorry for the low resolution on some of these. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, the concentric blah, blah, blah. And uh, half, half of it uh, with like a sine wave. Um, I hope I'm not boring you, but it's important info, perhaps. So, again, with probably in conjunction with a big stone blob that's that we're made to believe is a significant archaeological structure, and may have been, but uh, again, with these fancy schmancy patterns. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I mean, you get the idea of the pockmarks, the square square concentric rings, just a variation on the um, this plumbus rock with the uh, divots. Uh, yep, the line. Uh, the line across the circles. Uh, similar to, let's go back to that Nazca line. See, like, it wouldn't surprise me if this line here is strategic. 
um, or just like a variation on that stylistic letter of the alphabet like I'm talking about, like <laughs> right across it as a, for any number of purposes really, uh, including the no purpose purpose, um, that just being one possible purpose. And it looks like there's a kind of like a, another line across and possibly not meaning something, possibly also like serving as a weird like multi-dimensional anchor for like shit, I don't know, psychological programs that are installed via symbols at a very high level that we're not even capable of making sense of. Like, you know, those uh, psychology experiments where the subject of the study will drive by a billboard like every day for a month and it has a symbol on it. And then later they're asked to come up with their own um, design for whatchamacallit and they, they come up with the, uh, the symbol that was on the billboard. So like their own design was influenced by the symbol that was uh, in their subconscious or in their periphery of their vision and their awareness. So um, I've, I've considered the f possibility that stuff like this might be anchors for uh, installment of various psychological tendencies maybe or behavioral tendency, who knows? I mean, I, I would hate to get lost in a, an echo chamber of my own speculation, but I don't think it's too unreasonable to at least consider, or it's just a plumb is, I mean, who knows, whatever. Uh, same deal here, concentric rings with a line across, this one looking like it's somewhat larger. So it's a pretty, I mean, I'm guessing this is like 13 feet across or something. Uh, or, you know, it might just be the angle, but even if it's just a foot across, it took a lot of effort, and uh, it's, got, it's got the same same patterns we're seeing. This, this is the movie The Revenant, and uh, Leo's uh, Canteen. Um, when I first saw this movie, well, first of all, I really like the movie. I think it's a good movie. I've seen it several times. Um, Man, I could do a whole episode on movies, but I probably don't want to go down that road. Otherwise, I'll be spending another 10 years analyzing shit. But <clears throat> um, briefly, or as briefly as possible, uh, when I first saw the film, it struck me as weird that this had this uh, spiral on it. And I was waiting for like the story to connect the spiral on the canteen to like an actual story element or plot element, but uh, it didn't. Um, I guess you could argue that this movie is kind of existential and at least somewhat and this maybe has existential connotations So it's just, I don't know just like a like an Easter egg or whatever just something cool to throw in there but uh, Lately I'm thinking in movies just based on all this stuff. I'm noticing like we also see the the presence of the spiral shells here, so um, possibly telling you that it's not an accident but in movies, like in Harry Potter movies, I've seen the, the all-seeing eye in the background in the, what was it, the Great Hall in, the, in Hogwarts. Uh, in the background behind Dumbledore, you can see the all-seeing eye on the wall, uh, like at the beginning of the year, um, where he's given his talk, um, beginning of the school year. Anyways, uh, so I, I'm pretty sure in movies, I mean, it's obviously it's a well-tried observation that there's lots of symbols going on, and I think the spiral could be a, a truth drop type of thing. Um, <clears throat> and not only a, tr a truth drop or a, a wake-up call, but also possibly a, a trigger. So another thing I've noticed is the um, a paperweight that seems like it's been used in multiple movies, or just a prop on desks um, in like uh, office scenes. In like these high-end offices and like these uh it's a pyramid like it looks like the great pyramid or just a pyramid four-sided pyramid made of glass and it's uh it appears in several movies and i've wondered what like if well that first of all there may not even be a why it could just be like the production company just recycling their props like completely uh down to earth uh zero conspiracy explanation of course that's possible Maybe even probable, um, but I also think there's a strategic element going on here. Um, so I've okay, long, kind of long-winded, but I'm saying that the spiral and that pyramid paperweight, 
maybe even the, the all-seeing eye itself or whatever, all these symbols may be like anchors or um, triggers. Uh, triggers is what I'm getting at. So this may be like a, something which anchors you into uh, whatever's associated with it. So like this, um, this appears, they put the symbol where they want you to make an association. So like whatever's going on, uh, they, uh, they throw a symbol in there so that it like kind of etches a path in your mind. Uh, again, uh, very fringe or conspiratorial minded, but uh, like what if there were some very sophisticated operation to install a behavior set or uh, a disposition or I don't know, some, some type of mental or emotional software, so to speak, to install that via a hypnosis which uses symbols as um, part of its implementation process. So like we see, we see all these symbols and then we uh, associate whatever's going on in the scene or the, the movie themes with that symbol and then the appearance of that symbol over and over possibly serves as a, uh, whatchamacallit, a trigger. Both, well, both to strengthen the, whatever it's trying to install, and also to trigger whatever is installed, maybe, so that we're constantly being reminded of these um, unhealthy patterns. And uh, it's like being reprimed. So like, okay, that's a good way of putting it. Like, the appearance of these symbols primes whatever these symbols are, these symbols are associated with. So I think that sums up what I'm trying to say pretty well, so I'll say it one more time. The appearance of these symbols, both in art and in uh, movies and architecture and stuff, may serve to prime whatever these symbols are associated with in the mind of the beholder. And the, the associations themselves may be managed or, and even installed by these symbols or by some symbols. Um, but that's one possibility. Or it's just a plumbus trying to get us to study an empty symbol or nonsense. Okay, let's move on to other examples. Uh, same deal here. Pockmarks, uh, concentric rings. <sighs> trying to get through this. Sorry, I'm talking your ear off. But uh, it's important, kind of. Um, spirals, flowers, pockmarks, blah, uh, alien guy or alien looking guy with, uh, um, the pockmarks and the concentric, concentric spiral, or I guess this is more of just a spiral and, uh, the weird hands. And again, the scale, this is probably a fairly sizable stone work. Um, and just the discrepancy between the, the level of stonework or the level of skill required to create the stonework and what they created on the stonework or what they formed it into. Um, so this is like gibberish or uh, symbol soup maybe, or a distraction magnet or attention magnet meant to distract or whatever. Same type of deal here. Um, ooh, he's got circle earrings. What is he? Oh, circle earrings. Now we gotta go make a whole field of study for prim primitive circle earrings and that's the idea like trying to get you to pull you into dead ends or something like that maybe and this guy we're supposed to wonder why they have horns are they satanists are they um, pagan worshipers are they just uh, worshiping primitive like the rain god or something like that and i'm saying maybe none of the above maybe it's just a plant or a false set of symbols. Um, the antelope with the spiral tail that morphs into the antelope. Um, this boxy, whatever this is. Yeah, just, I mean, just kind of gibberish, I think. This guy, looking like it's not very old, I would say. Could be, I don't know, but I would call this a plumbus. And you see more of him back here. Again, with, I'm sure, many variations. And even these um, gash marks or discontinuities in the stone, these uh, 
tool marks you might say or these deep grooves I would say that's prob probably part of the same thing or possibly at least and just this array of divots and nonsense soup I think and I like this image because um, first of all why do you need so many layers of this is like doorway -ception. we've got this 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 and then finally the entrance which is too small for human incidentally which I would say is uh, by design so that we're meant to wonder and go into this whole eddy of oh was it giants was it miniature like dwarf people like oh is it a lost civilization is it this that or the other and I'm not saying it couldn't have originally been a site of a lost civilization but if it was it was plumbicized or uh, besmirched or given a makeover in a very significant way overhauled in appearance so if if legitimate then the site has been subsequently uh, graffitied and is no longer uh, legitimate or is mostly graffiti now but I would say it might even just be graffiti from the get-go uh, so like and also okay look at the the scale the size of the rocks but like these rocks this is not precise stonework like this is these are goofy proportions like um, like this side is taller than this side it would appear and you'll see that a lot like very wonky wobbly um, stuff that's like it kind of has an aesthetic of oldness and uh, like old timiness and primitiveness but it's very like it's like a poorly drawn building if you if you get what I'm saying um, but then we have these more precise looking spirals which I mean are kind of derpy but uh, the reason I like this image um, to get back to that point is uh, this right here um, so whatever this hole was for assuming it was for anything uh, they didn't finish it so this you can see is this bit of stone is continuous and um, it doesn't look like a repair here at the corner it looks like this was made to have an unfinished corner and you can see the spiral kind of possibly continuing here onto this unfinished corner as a way of telling us that this corner is deliberately left unfinished as a clue to tell us that this porthole uh, is like just a, a nonsensical porthole that is designed in a way that you wouldn't design one if you were trying to design a structure that makes sense that can that sentence make any sense <laughs> um, but like why why would you leave this corner unfinished if you're going to go to the effort or to the length to um, put yourself out to make all the, of these this grandiose or at least large scale work and then you don't even finish this corner like it's like another 45 minutes of work to just cut this corner out like it's not that hard and then even little stuff like this like um, but uh, I think this corner is a clue and I may be way off but I may be way on um, this as well spirals running into spirals with a horse like the spiral like overriding the horse pattern overwriting not overriding um, or ox I guess this is an ox with his ox horns and it's concentric circles and this is what Al Algeria and then we have the wavy wavy um, meandering spiral lines just like we see in the Fernoik pan in South Africa on the ground that we were looking at from Google Earth uh, this is very similar to that I would say and like this and then this as well spirals from Isturias France and um, yeah it's it's a big kit of like history is a big kit of goofiness um, I'm more confident about that than I am about why it's a big kit of goofiness but I am fairly confident at this point that history or most of these 
uh, artifacts, or at least I feel like I should be conservative saying most, but many, um, a significant portion of the artifacts and architectural sites are, uh, are just a big kit of goofy gibberish. Possibly a kit which metabolized non-goofy structures, like it, it, um, it morphed legitimate art into illegitimate art that's part of this kit now. I think I said that already a minute ago, but uh, I think most of all this kind of stuff and the pyramids, the Great Pyramid, Easter Island, I think it's all like a kit of goofy stuff, but I'm more confident to say that than I am about why they made this kit. Uh, so another look at this similar area, it's, we see different, um, more of like a, ta what is that, like a barbed wire tattoo that you get around your arm. Um, I forget what that's called, that pattern, but just a different variation on the pattern. And uh, possibly pop marked walls, although that may just be the natural limestone or whatever. Same thing, nice little snake, weird lines, circles connecting with an X, uh, just soup, which could mean something, it probably doesn't. Um, this is in, I don't know where this is, but it's yet another maze type of thing, uh, made of stacked rocks, and this could certainly be modern, or 15th century, or 2000 years old, I don't know. Uh, well, let's see if the caption says... The Hollywood stone was found beside an ancient paved pilgrim's trackway which leads through the Wicklow Mountains in Ireland. So this is in Ireland, um, and I assume the ho let's, well, let's look up the Hollywood stone real quick, but um, yeah, Wicklow something or other in Ireland, and it's got, yeah, this strange pattern, like a catch and throw of similar symbols, like clues. Um, pointing to each other, like linking these sites, or trying to get us to link these sites together, and trying to get us to connect the dots in general as to the, the overall agenda behind it. Maybe that might be the purpose behind this. But let's look at the Hollywood Stone real quick. Yeah, here we go. This is the Hollywood Stone, and it was found next to that maze of stacked rocks, right? like this thing. Stone was found beside ancient paved blah blah blah. Um, and this is apparently the so-called Hollywood Stone, or I guess there's multiple of them, uh, the Hollywood Stones. And here they are. Just dots, nonsensical dots. Ooh, a maze. What is it? What is it? Another maze. So that's, that's the idea here. It's a big maze with mazes as one of the symbols of the maze. <laughs> a big maze of symbols. Um, possible, possible bullshit tool marks here. I don't know what this is. Uh, looks like from the same place, Wicklow. Bullshit tool, tool marks. Um, this, ooh, I'll have to link this to another thing I was going to talk about in this video. Uh, but that's probably bullshit too. You know what, let's just look at it now. So we've got these Crehelp Standing Stone megalithic monuments of Ireland. And, uh, with these... This like whole thing in the middle, and um, so we're probably meant to wonder if it's like a an astrological site or an aligned like observatory or whatever, whatever. Uh, but then we also have this modern art installation in Spain. Okay, here it is, uh, Menhirs por la Paz in Spain. It's in Coruña or Coruña, Spain, and it's a modern art installation, like within the last, I can't remember, last couple decades it was built, and it's got these, again, these, uh, it's called a menhir, or sometimes they call it like, I don't know, standing stone or whatever, but uh, it's got these these holes in it, and I'm, I'm thinking this is a way of telling us multiple things. One, that uh, the toolers with a capital T, or the fuckers with a capital F, the mischief makers, the authors, with a capital A of this whole um, symbol soup program, uh, the history makers, they they're telling us here that they're still here, that uh, they made this maybe, and also that uh, they're trying to 
alert us to the where this appears in older structures or they're doing it like maybe they don't want us to find out they don't want us to connect the dots maybe they just have to for like karmic clauses or whatever they have to out themselves in subtle ways like this they have to make it discoverable so they have to make their program discoverable even though they don't want to so that's a possibility but again this is modern stuff but we see uh, they very well could have polished this if they wanted to but um, they left the tool marks on there possibly as a clue this guy is a complete goof goof show um, it's like the weird very weird proportions and very derpy and I would say poorly drawn um, but these these are new and um, the artist said uh, he wanted it to be left um, up to interpretation and uh, I, when I was reading about this that's what I remember him saying um, or her I can't remember oh and there's a Stonehenge thing there too it's meant to be thought-provoking uh, blah 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 meditative hope rat field okay whatever uh, in 2001 built in 2001 or something so whatever you're supposed to look through these holes and see what you see and it's supposed to mean something each each view is supposed to mean something or whatever but uh I'm I'm drawing a connection between this thing this guy and this thing in Ireland so this is ancient this is modern and note also that at this site we have a little representation of Stonehenge or something very similar so I'm saying this is a big old truth drop uh, this this in itself is pretty good evidence that the protocol is ongoing um, if someone wants to translate that, this that would be valuable but uh, whatever um, yeah, I mean, I went off on a tangent here, but yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking this is like a truth drop and a wake-up call, like to get you to look at the clues. You probably remember the, the Georgia Guide Stones. That's probably part of this whole protocol as well. But let me get back to those spirals and finish that thread. So the, the spiral stones was found in Ireland next to this thing. And then we're almost done here. Hang in there. Uh... Yeah, the pock marks. Spiral soup with spirals linking up with spirals meandering into suns and uh, angles and plumbuses. This is like a legit plumbus right here. <laughs> uh, another look at this thing with the spirals over here and then the zigzags on this side and variations on the spiral. Just a plumbus basically. This uh, plumbusy dude with a spiral like first of all very weird proportions like poorly drawn and uh, I think we saw this one already um, spiral petroglyphs so are our petroglyphs 100% legit or are they part of the show the big show with a capital S uh, etched into the let's see what's the caption here Tintagel Labyrinth near Cornwall, England. That's just into the side of a rock. Cool. This. Neolithic carving. Yorkshire. Tree of Life. Meh, maybe. Or it's just circle soup with lines. Like, there it is. Spiral symbols, dots, flowers, suns. This menorah thing. Spirals. These divots. This is like a, a pretty good image of... Uh, uh, these divots, like smaller ones, bigger ones, the variations, these uh, horizontal tick marks. This is, a, a, I have better images of this that I'll show later, but this whole stone is a perfect example of symbol soup. This one too, this might be the same site. Uh, circles connecting with lines. Okay, that, that about does it for my uh, spiral images that I wanted to show. And going to keep talking a little more about the spirals aspect with some open tabs in Google Chrome. So 
thanks for sticking with me. Now let's talk about, um, well, this modern spiral, Mexico City. I put this in my place marks. You may have seen it. Um, I just want to say that, yes, I'm aware that not every spiral we see is inexplicable. Like this one was built in 1944 as part of a, what is it called? It's a retention basin. And you can read about how it works here. Like uh, it's a levee, basically. 3,200 meters, so very large as you can see, and built in 1944, used as an aquaculture pond and possibly water treatment. Pictures of it now, it's like kind of in dis disuse, and um, I just want to say I'm, I'm aware that stuff like this can be functional. Like the spiral is a very useful shape, and obviously whirlpools and hurricanes and stuff, it's naturally occurring, seashells and stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm aware of that. I don't know why I wouldn't be, but just mentioning it. And also just wanted to throw out the 10% chance that this is part of the same protocol. But since it is functional, I would say probably not. Uh, however, this is a national reserve, which I thought was kind of weird, just because so many national reserves and wildlife preserves have all the goofy lines. So it could be, uh, once again, a, a multi-purpose um, overlapping thing where, yes, it is practical and just, just built for conventional purposes, but it's also uh, indirectly part of this protocol, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Uh, this one's probably just modern, but let's not spend too much time on it. Um, so again, with the ongoing component of this, or the potential ongoing aspect of this. This is called Desert Breath. It's an art installation in, I, I believe, Egypt. Um, and it's pretty well discussed. Um, and obviously, conspiracy theorists went crazy with it, like, oh, what is it? Uh, but uh, uh, it, it is modern, built recently. And um, well, first of all, I'd like to point out the scale of it. Like, it's pretty freaking huge which doesn't necessarily point to anything unusual or any weird agenda behind it, but uh, you can see the scale of it. Like these are very, very large. Um, maybe this, maybe there's a person here we can get for scale. Uh, looks like an empty case of beer or something. Uh, you can see the scale of it, like a very huge installation. There we go, person for scale. Um, very large, very, very large. And, uh, it's called Desert Breath, and I don't really see anything significant in the name, but I do consider that maybe this is uh, like those uh, men here's in Spain with the holes in them, the standing stones with the holes in them we just looked at, and also like the South Africa spirals. Like this may be a modern truth drop or modern leg of the program, and... Uh, just uh, one more case study. Yeah, you see the massive scale of it. Just considering that just because it's a modern art installation doesn't mean it's not a truth drop by the people in the know. Okay. Yeah, this was the Menhirs, which I was going to talk about now, but I already talked about. This guy having a nice little ride here. Um, so yeah, modern art installations as a truth drop or clue, clue in. Um, yeah, as a clue in to what's going on. So like they were trying to tell you in the past, but they're still trying to tell you with yet more art. And this is uh, Laguna Beach. So if you remember, uh, I showed you this, this groove in Laguna Beach, California, uh, which I'm suspecting is artificial and possibly part of this terraforming uh, aspect, whatever. Um, yeah, but, uh, there's this, uh, series of public art displays along the walkway here, and the one right in front of this has this bench with, uh, the people holding up the bench, and the title of the piece is Support. So, I mean, obviously a bench supports people, but it's like the idea of the lower class holding up the upper class. And then possibly the proximity with this groove out in front 
uh, across the rocks is like a, a, uh, a hint or a clue or um, I don't know, maybe I'm seeing connections where there are none, but you've probably seen lots of works of art where you see people like this in positions that aren't particularly comfortable, like the lower class holding up the upper class. And that could be another like truth drop as well. Like that could be the aim of this whole protocol uh, or program or tooling of earth or whatever. It could be just to find ways to, for the, um, the in group to experience less bad shit and more good shit. And in order to substrate that outcome, uh, somebody has to bear the load. So like the, the minions or the, the hosts to use Westworld terminology or the, the general public is, uh, is the support for the, um, the lavish, awesome lifestyles that they may lead, or I don't know what they do, but the tipping of the scales in favor of the toolers is supported by this type of societal configuration where the lower class supports the upper class. And then the, that whole dynamic is implemented via this, at least in part via this tooling of earth slash plumbus program to use my own terminology. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible. I looked at some of the other art pieces along this walkway and some of them were slightly strange like this and other ones didn't look very suspicious at all. So it could be a coincidence. Coincidences always should always be on the table. So this could be a coincidence, but just the idea of modern art as an ongoing part of this protocol and with these spirals as yet another aspect of that. So I'm not quite sure these were for cattle, you know, not that cattle don't use it, but there's something weird going on and could be, it could be a coincidence where, where all this other stuff I'm talking about is true, but this is not an example of that. That's of course possible. Um, okay. So more spirals. That's what you want to see. So Mars, uh, this article talking about how these spirals, uh, occurred via some type of volcanic activity, which is certainly possible on Mars. Um, however, I would just encourage you to look at this in comparison to the stuff we've been looking at in this video up till now and ask yourself if this isn't a big, um, gag or prank to, uh, to either put these on Mars or either put these in this photograph or in some sense, make a false photograph, perhaps. I'm, I mean, I, I don't even know if Mars is real. It might be, but, um, it's real in some sense. Cause you can look in your telescope and see it, but what it is, I'm not quite sure. It may be a planet, certainly. Um, uh, or it may just be a projection on a 2D screen that's moving in, uh, whatever. I mean, whatever. Don't want to discuss that now. But these spirals, I think it's another hint, guys. You. <laughs> um, I think this is another hint that, uh, another truth drop. They're they're putting their their bullshit symbols on stuff that is bullshit. Maybe could be that something like that And of course we've seen multiple other anomalies with Mars like this crab on Mars. You may have heard about uh, Brief comment on that and like what this apparent like dude and like this helmet um, the face on Mars of course so the idea is that all these anomalies are yet another aspect of this protocol just on Mars. <laughs> so it's an anomaly extravaganza, a big, uh, county fair of anomalies, a big carnival of anomalies might be a good summary of our reality in some sense, or one, one angle of it, one aspect of it. Um, and false anomalies, I might add, or some of these may be legit in some sense, but I think a lot of 
these Mars anomalies are plants. And that leads me into my next topic, which is another Mars anomaly, but which resembles the symbols seen in Japan, or this building seen in Japan, and crop circles and the Nazca lines. So I'm going to take you through this concept of, I don't know, you could call this a keyhole or an exclamation point, but this, once again, could be a, another letter, so to speak, in the symbol soup alphabet in the big computer program which generates our reality for us possibly or something like that but yeah just a letter of the symbol alphabet of the plumbus protocol so th according to this guy there's many structures with this pattern this keyhole pattern in japan and he shows you a few of them here including a few diagrams so we've got this one uh, this keyhole pattern with these round buildings and mounds around it. This is in Japan, according to this guy, assuming his facts are right. And uh, this first one also, this first image he shows. So we've got this keyhole building here. Uh, we've got a, an apparent keyhole or exclamation point thing on Mars. He points out model of it. Uh, that's either a model or a real picture. But apparently a bunch of these things. And uh, this one, keyhole shaped uh, like park or almost like star fort esque, but uh, using that keyhole symbol kind of. And then don't get a good look at it, but this one here, another keyhole shaped thing uh, in Japan. So the idea is these, well, I already explained the idea. But let's, let's look at some examples in Nazca lines and crop circles. So we have on Mars, we have it in Japan. Then here we have it in Peru, the Nazca lines. So just this array of, like, this is like halfway between a keyhole and an exclamation point, I would say. And a bunch of them, for whatever reason, this just circle right here, or maybe it's exclamation point out of frame, uh, concentric, just dots here. So symbol soup with recycled recurring symbols. And then also these crop circles, which I mentioned. So this is yet another possible bit of evidence for the ongoing aspect, because obviously all these crop circles are pretty recent within the last few decades. Um, this one may be 2017. So it's, these things are still popping up and uh, they've been popping up for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And so you can't really make the case that something weird isn't still going on. Um, although maybe people did this with conventional means. Maybe it was accomplished with more high-tech means. But however it was made, I would say it possibly serves the same agenda or was done by the same people as the people who did these Nazca lines and the people who did this Mars exclamation point and the people who did this Japan exclamation point slash keyhole type construction. And I would even go so far as to say that this uh, little loop-de thing on this keyhole, I might even say that that's yet another little, uh, like like akin to the knobs on the sto uh, stone blocks in Peru. Like this is just a, a little bullshit mystery or a, a little bullshit thing to ponder over or just gibberish output of the symbol soup kind of symbol soup or like a, a hallmark of the algorithms it uses like something to wonder about not that wondering about it is necessarily the main purpose but there's something about creating like little bullshit idiosyncrasies like this that's part of these structures and the whole agenda behind them and also later in this video this guy zooms in right here and you can see like little straight lines and stuff um, and I would say that's or like a little possible rectangle. And I would say that's just the same type of deal as this, like little idiosyncrasies to get lost in or or whatever. Um, and then the this keyhole shaped uh, crop circle, this keyhole shaped crop circle. So again, ongoing plumbusness, I would say. And these little circles, I would say, I mean, a circle is obviously like the most universal thing in the world, but like, 
kind of, I mean, kind of looking like the all-seeing eye or like the Paramount Pictures intro or something like that with the stars around, but the, I'm considering that these might be like, kind of like those divots we're seeing on all the stones or the indentations uh, that I was, all those images I was showing you with the various uh, stone carvings. Uh, might be a bit of a stretch, but yeah, this exclamation point slash keyhole thing could be part of the symbol alphabet of nonsense. Okay, and yet another piece of possible evidence pointing to the ongoing aspect. This Mari man, it's a 4.2 kilometer long figure that shows an aboriginal hunter with a stick in his hand. It's in uh, outback, or the outback of South Australia, and it was made in 1998. So um, this is provably recent. Uh, scratched 30 centimeters deep into the earth, so not that deep, but uh, good view of it, what it generally looks like. And uh, apparently there was like a an American flag found nearby and like a kit with like American propaganda or something like that, like buried nearby or something. But I would say uh, this is just like the Nazca lines. It's just like the crop circle exclamation points. It's just like the spirals in South Africa. It's a dummy geoglyph earthwork. It's an ongoing aspect of this thing. Doesn't that seem reasonable? I mean, 4.2 kilometers, like someone went to great lengths to create this. So I think it's part of the same agenda, and I think the agenda is still going on, or at least as of 1998. And I think the spirals in South Africa might be part of that same agenda. So I think the Nazca Lines are, is an ongoing project, so to speak, and this is like yet another part of it. Um, yeah. Pretty crazy to think about. Uh, another recent ongoing thing that showed up in China near the Mongolia border is this um, little polygonal tessellated thing here. Here it is in Google Earth. And um, apparently, according to most people, it is an, uh, it's used to sa uh, calibrate satellites or satellite cameras. Um, I would say, based on my own intuition, you can calibrate a satellite camera with any landmark, so you wouldn't need to create a special one. But um, a ways over here we see a second one. There's like two of these polygon looking ones, and uh, also some additional other symbols in the area, or just weird patterns. And yes, they are recent. You can actually see them show up in Google Earth Pro in the historical photos. Uh, you can see the construction crews like building it and you see tire tracks and stuff. So you see it is made by conventional means. See like here, it's obviously brand new in 2006. So I was getting all deflated when I saw this modern stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking it might be part of it. Obviously, could be used to calibrate satellite cameras. Like, see here in 2005, it's under construction. So, and uh, whatever method they're using here, see the tire tracks. So, obviously, it's crews of conventional uh, vehicles just doing their thing. It's not like uh, high tech or anything. Uh, so, these people are building this, obviously. Is it to sa calibrate satellite cameras? That's certainly very possible. Um, or is it to like, like here's another thing. Is it just to make weird symbols like that Mari man in Australia and the Nazca lines? See like this, this is yet another, I would consider this the same type of deal. Just like, uh, I don't know whether it's an airstrip or something or like this looks like it might be an airstrip. Uh, maybe this is a new one under construction. I don't know. But uh, uh, let's see how long it's looked like that. It's looked the same since 2007. So 2003, maybe under construction. All the images kind of glitchy. 2004, 
2005, it looks new. So yeah, probably new in 2005. Over 10 years old, hasn't changed. So this might be um, to calibrate the cameras as well or something like that. Or it might be part of this gibberish protocol. Just food for thought and let's not spend too much time on it. Okay. So you remember this image. Bolivia, this wonky, uh, this whole area near Lake Titicaca with uh, all these squiggles and this like star here and a whole bunch of like a vast like 400 square miles or something like that of squiggliness and um, first of all I'd like to point out that see how this looks older and this looks newer and crisper so I think that's yet again possible evidence that this protocol is ongoing assuming that there is some mischievous aspect to this at all I mean maybe this is like a, a regular farming technique I don't know about that especially like the one nearby that had letters like A-I-T written. I would say this is more or less like similar to the Nazca lines and the Mari man that we were just looking at. Just modern, modern legs of the Nazca lines agenda. Just um, goofy nonsense written everywhere in various styles. So, uh, but the crispness and newness of some of this pattern, I don't think I mentioned last time that it's in contrast with the other patterns so I think that's possible evidence that it's ongoing and very dynamic and uh, this article more geoglyphs strange patterns in Kazakhstan uh, this time and I just wanted to point these out just to possibly strengthen the case that there's a uh, strange patterns uh, everywhere in um, these might be Kanats, Q-A-N-A-T, which is like a type of irrigation system, but somehow I don't think so for all of these. Um, yeah, I, I'm thinking this is this is like a square with an X in the middle, and you see kind of the landscape itself is kind of dotty, dotty. Um, these are like mounds, and I would say this is similar to the Nazca lines and to the this thing in Bolivia it's just uh, another and this is on the other side of the world so yeah this like swastika thing which I would say is yet another letter of the symbol alphabet which makes gibberish salad all the time <laughs> same and an another look here they're pointing out the Jordan stone circles or kites or whatever and yeah, obviously, this is looking like feature salad. Here's one in Russia that I thought was worth mentioning as well. Uh, is it an animal or is it not? I would say it is meant to look like it could be an animal. Or it's like the output of a computer program which has animals as letters of its alphabet which it interpolates between... So it, like you can imagine a slider, like we could, it's, it's just labeled gibberish and then you drag the slider and it takes what looks like a, what is this supposed to be? An elk? <laughs> so it, it takes a clip art of an elk and you just drag the slider of uh, derpify and it slowly turns into this, like, and then drag it back and it looks like a normal elk. So someone like some type of program or something, algorithm made derpy geoglyphs on purpose. And worth repeating one more time that just beware of buying into something just because you've heard it a thousand times and just because it made sense. Like I've probably said that a thousand times by now, like the derpy gibberish on purpose thing, that whole angle. Um, but just beware of like, because I, I could still be wrong or I could be like 10% right or 50% right or something like that. but. There's a tendency to just buy into something just because it's it minimizes cognitive load and and hearing something a whole bunch of times makes you like start to believe it, it like regardless of how true it is like that's what politicians do in their campaigns they just repeat these little phrases and then we start to believe them so I just want just don't don't let that happen with these videos and again just because the explanation fits the data doesn't mean it's the right explanation for the data but. We have a swast uh, tri swastika 
Um, see, this is like a halfway between a tri-spiral and a swastika, wouldn't you say? So it's like they're interpolating between these symbols. Or just doodling freestyle without interpolation via computer. Could just be freestyle doodling. But somebody's doodling. I think that's pretty clear by now. Alright, uh, let's move along. So, spottiness. Again, probably the termite mounds or fairy circles, like the plants competing for water. But, um, first of all, there is quite a bit of academic disagreement in the explanation for this stuff. Uh, some people think termites don't play much of a role. Some people think the plants are less responsible or more responsible. Some people think it's a combination between the plants competing for water and the termite mounds, like millions of year old termite mounds, or at least hundreds or thousands. So these really old termite mounds that have feedback loops with the landscape. Um, I did find it interesting that South Africa is not talked about much. They more they focus on Namibia, which looks kind of different, the look of the land. Also these wavy lines. I would be, I mean, especially given these poles, I would say this is almost 100% modern, but I do want to talk about these wavy lines a bit more in a minute. And also this next example on the dots, I think I showed you this image earlier in this video. Um, this is like Foldregarn Hill Fort, I think, somewhere in the UK. Yeah, I would say the the dots are these dense indentations may be similar to there's still a chance that these dots are plumbusy, like just texturing for garnish or something. Like this may be just garnish and like stylistic gibberish, like I already said. And then also I felt like I should really show you this example. This is in Peru and this is, um, I'd encourage you to pause on this description. I'm not going to read it for you, but uh, it basically tells you what's going on here. And uh, it's these, um, this band of holes, this long band of holes. And there's some variations, it's pretty perplexing, and I'll show it to you in Google Earth, but it's got kind of like the whole idea of using dots or bumps or dents as, once again, an another letter of the symbol soup alphabet, uh, or the strange patterns alphabet. So here's that band of holes, and there's no academic consensus behind what they are, according to what I read. Um, it extends to like this bit of river uh, and then it looks like it kind of peters out here or it's been written over by modern civilization but we see these I guess this is as close of a view as we can get in Google Earth but it's these uh, holes which range in diameter uh, several feet across I think on average and start and stop and I would say this is another dummy feature like the Nazca lines, like a multi-purpose like truth drop slash confusion element slash uh, dummy feature slash whatever the whole Plumbus thing is. Uh, and there's also other strange structures nearby which people point out. Maybe this. Yeah, like the patchy uh, hillsides and that whole discussion. Maybe even this like gash or gouge right here, just large scale, whatchamacallits. And then the photos. So some of it is stacked rocks. Some of it is dug holes, like just a little hole in the ground, almost like bricked work here. And some of it's just like rubble. And this is one that I think has been there a long time. This is more like a almost like an adobe brick. I don't know if it is, but it just could be. Uh, let's see, the surrounding landscape, very rocky, and these holes. And it's over a mile long, the band. So I think people are saying like the scale of it is too big, like for it to just be an easy, easy explanation. But just for consideration, and then with the wavy lines, I just want to say that not everything that's 
easily identifiable as a terrace is um, off the hook in terms of being part of this protocol. Like this very much looks like a terrace. This is Incan. So however old that place is that, um, a thousand or two thousand years maybe, but, um, or I don't know, 500, I can't remember. But uh, these structures I'm saying are very likely not just agricultural, but for show or um, not that they weren't ever used for agriculture, but more built as part of this uh, large scale goofy project I'm talking about. Hmm. Like it's just like deliberately odd and large scale, possibly as a way to triangulate us to make us feel small or something like that, like our sense of context. But these, one could see how these ridges might be for agriculture or how they might be just wavy lines like the weird squiggles we've seen, squiggles. I forgot how I wanted to phrase this, but this may be part of, like when you see wavy lines from, a, from above or so-called what I'm calling wavy lines, it's still, it still might be terracing, but it might also be part of the program, man. Pretty staggering. Okay, next example. This is the Isle of Skye in Scotland, and kind of along the lines of these wavy lines, we have these ridges of what are looking to me like intertwined bits of like rock and possibly quasi-artificial um, elements of the hillside. Like in the Macher episode, when I took you through uh, Peru, there's a lot of the Peruvian landscape that kind of looks like this. And it's covered in grass here, so you can't really tell. But it's almost like it's walls intermixed with bedrock. It kind of looks like that. So I'll just scrub through these here. Uh, so this is like kind of like a wonky terracing almost. Certainly could be natural. I would even suspect that this like outcrop with a staircase type thing on top is like deliberate, like as a, like this whole program is like a doghouse, like a, uh, a kit, a toy kit, an impressive one, but a kit to house human experience. So the mountains and the landscape and the the architectural or nearly architectural aspect of this is um, all part of the backdrop for the human game, whatever game we're playing. It's kind of the idea. So, and then we've got these, <laughs> what, do, what do you know? Stone, uh, stone circles, just arranged rocks. There we go, fairy glen. And I would say these striations or uh, I've, I don't know the technical geological term, but they may, they may there's a chance these may not be natural. Uh, this, this right here, this pattern. And of course we have these concentric circles worth considering. Another look at it here. Uh, this look, looking like a spiral possibly, or at least concentric circles, stacked rocks. And uh, yeah, it's just a big backdrop, a big Disneyland for humans to play in slash get shafted in. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so I'm not necessarily buying the naturalness of this landscape. I can't say I'm 100% or even 50% that I think it's artificial, but especially since it's covered in grass here in these images, but... Uh, Based on some of the other mature stuff we've seen, I think there's a good chance this may be artificial. Like this ridge here, that may be artificial. See here? Check it out. This pattern, which I'm saying looks mostly natural, but maybe artificial. Right here, I would say it's looking very artificial. And I would say that is kind of like a, almost a smooth transition there from more messy to like, I mean, maybe these have been maintained by the, the trail makers, but I would say even the trail makers may be the, the work of the earth managers. Not that trails aren't certainly maintained and built in current times, but uh, 
these things are looking more like walls here to me than natural strata of rock. Just saying, could be almost similar thing here, almost, almost, almost like kind of parallel rocky ridges. I don't know, tough to say. Definitely right there, you see it kind of, kind of defined. Here, like moundy, you see like moundy mature look. These big, large scale mounds with the parallel lines. And one thing I should probably touch on is like, where does natural geological process play into all this? And I would say it's probably um, all of the conventional uh, academic theories and um, schools of thought on glacial formation and geological processes and magma and all that, all of that is most likely still valid and most likely the explanation for Earth's general form over very, very long time scales, just like we're told. Um, however, I think there's heavy, heavy intervention which utilizes mimicry as a part of its strategy. And I think they're probably able to get beyond the threshold of being able to tell. So there may be areas that are so well mimicked that you can't tell whether it's a natural glacial valley or an artificial valley that's made to look glacial. That's possible. I don't really have any strong evidence for that other than like the mature and stuff. But it remains to be seen how much of this stuff is surface level anomalies and how much is like like how deep into the ground it goes i mean there's obviously there's a lot of people have talked about like huge cavern systems and you know old old mines that may not be mines some of them at least tunnels uh tunnels is a huge thing i haven't really even touched on um not much anyways but like how, how deep and into, into the earth does the protocol go and uh, I don't know, but let's um, move to the next topic. Actually, these stone balls this is one thing that could easily be either natural or uh, mimicked or both. Okay, so this uh, Google Earth blog, uh, I just wanted to show you a couple examples of reclamation, uh, land reclaiming in Google Earth, uh, time lapses of these lands, these bits of coast being built out because it's important to see that it kind of looks like what I'm calling old grid. And uh, this is obviously new work within the last 10, 20 years. And um, you can see it form over time. And it's, I mean, the old, the adjective old is uh, not very accurate. I think just because the I mean, you leave something out near the ocean for a couple days and it starts to corrode, so that doesn't mean it's old. But uh, yeah, you see some old grid patterns, which are obviously new. And then, yeah, just these build-outs, which are intended to uh, reclaim land which was lost to erosion, just natural processes. And uh, just that's what it looks like. So I think a good... 50 to 90 percent of the old grid stuff I've shown may just be like duds but uh yeah and then artificial islands as well uh see here we have these coral atolls in the Maldives and you can see this one especially you can watch it as it builds out and it, they're kind of uh laying out like the I don't know the structural underbelly of of this uh this atoll as they uh, move and construct more island and um, you can see it kind of looks like uh, the old grid I'm talking about so uh, that could be some of what, what we're seeing and also like just the extent of it and how quickly they're able to do it like I'm, I'm now kind of thinking that a lot of those islands I was pointing out they may not be they may be artificial but they may just be new you know what I mean like a natural atoll, which they did this to, you know, for no 
no sneaky conspiratorial reason at all. It's just development. Um, and this one as well, you can see how quickly and how extensively they can build a new area of land. So a lot of these atoll islands, I think where I'm saying like, oh, there's an artificial sweep or an artificial angle along the coast um, or hard at the end of a line or whatever. Uh, those that might all be part of this type of uh, construction work. So uh, there's that. Here you see kind of an old gritty pattern as well. These artificial constructions, which are modern. I wouldn't necessarily say this has to be part like a modern leg of the the protocol. I think this is more just like people doing their thing. It doesn't strike me as suspicious, anyways, when I see this. But uh, so Beru, for example, this island, I was showing you like uh, the the ends of the island have this old grid, which I used uh, in the old grid episode as an example. But according to the Wikipedia, it's uh, ponds for milkfish. So let me read you this one sentence. Extensive spit development has created the nearby enclosed lagoon at the north where the mangroves are present. A small lagoon at the northern tip, so here and here is where the old grid is, so is surrounded by man-made fish ponds to hold milkfish. So it's just a type of fish, um, whatever. And there is a similar feature at the south end of the, the islet or island. So yeah, this old grid thing I was saying, uh, it's apparently to hold milkfish. And uh, apparently extensive spit development has created blah, blah, blah. So I think there might be some uh, artificial development of this island in addition to these milkfish ponds, which are giving us these patterns we see. Um, so I would say there's still something um, that tickles my spidey senses with the whole fish pond thing. Uh, in Hawaii as well. Some of them look quite odd. Um, doesn't mean they are odd. Uh, I, this could be one of those where I'm 100% wrong. Or after reading the article. I mean, I do wonder who the hell writes Wikipedia articles. And some of them are obviously way off base. Like, I'm pretty sure Wikipedia's explanation for the pyramids or for ancient Rome um, is way off based on all the stuff I've seen. So, I don't know if, I mean, the, I, I'll bet you if we went here, we would find milkfish. Um, so, uh, I'm still wondering if it was something else before it was milk ponds, or milkfish ponds. Like, I don't know how many of these gratuitous lines you would really need for that type of operation. But then again, I don't know about milkfish harvesting, so I could be wrong. And another possibility is, as they were doing the artificial laying of the island or editing of the island, building out in modern years, like we were seeing those time lapses a moment ago. Uh, this could be like structural under underlaying that they just decided to use for milkfish ponds later, or something like that. And then it's the same thing at the other end of the island. And kind of uh, finishing this video anticlimactically here, because these are kind of undermining my argument but uh, just the artificial islands I was pointing out, they may be just conventional modern artificial work. You know what I mean? So here's the other end of the island. More milkfish ponds. I don't know why you need so many and why some of them are strangely shaped, but could be milkfish ponds over old patterns or more likely just new milkfish ponds, nothing to see here type of thing. And then, uh, so the artificial islands, I've been pointing out, like this one, Korea Island. Of course, I was saying this uh, looks like it's been chunked out. And I would say it's very possible that, yes, that's the case, but it was done sometime recently. Uh, 2005 looks basically the same, so not within the last 10, 15 years, but maybe prior to that, modern crews like in the 1990s or something. Um, and we see some old gritty type stuff here. Uh, maybe farms, whatever. Aquaculture. But a lot of this stuff, which I'm saying looks artificially chunked out, it may be, but that may just be like 
the the time lapses we were seeing of those um, islands in the Maldives where they just build out a bit of the atoll at a time like this so that's why it could look artificial because it's it's just this process okay so that is the end of this video thank you for watching and I will be back next time with uh, whatever's next so I'll see you soon